one, you're not urinating very much. And if you do urinate, you generally see it's a very dark, concentrated urine because most of the water has been removed from the urine, pulled back in the body through this hormone arginine vasopressin. That's what vasopressin should do. That's why we need it, and that's why it's an important hormone. Marilyn finally had an answer to a 10-year-old problem. What she didn't know was that her hyponatremia was so severe that she was also having trouble with her memory, a symptom she thought was just related to growing older. I didn't tell my husband that I was having trouble remembering things because I thought that, he, you know, everybody would think I was getting some kind of dementia early on or something. I kept going, why can't I remember this? Well, I'm not going to tell anybody. I've you know, my brain is acting weird. You know, I don't want anyone to know this. I'll just hide it and try to cover up, you know. Don't cover up. Covering up is very dangerous. Okay. Take this paper in your right hand, fold it in half, and put it on the table. There are specific screening tests designed to look for the subtle effects of hyponatremia on the brain. What were those three words I asked you to remember? The elderly are uniquely at risk for some of the more subtle okay. complications of chronic hyponatremia. In fact, we used to call that type of, hy of hyponatremia asymptomatic hyponatremia, in quotation marks, because these patients generally, if they didn't have any other underlying neurological disease, appeared to be fine. Recently, studies have been done to look more carefully at neurocognitive function in these patients because we've noticed, both myself and other clinicians, that patients often described problems that wouldn't be picked up routinely on a physical exam. Uh, problems such that, uh, you know, when, I, when my sodium's low, I just don't read as much because I can't concentrate on the kind of activity that's involved in reading and reading comprehension. <laughs> my brain starts to turn to mush. I can't remember things. I can't remember very basic things. I break off in the middle of a conversation. I don't remember what I was talking about. In most cases, Marilyn recognizes when her sodium level is getting too low and alerts the doctor. Sometimes it is Brian, her husband, who figures it out. He always tests me because I do genealogy. And when I'm not having a trouble, I can spout out generations of things or tell you where people came from or things like that. So he'll come up and he'll say, who is your mother's mother's mother? And if I can answer it, then he knows my sodium is okay. So I'm just gonna attach this clip to the belt. Recent research has found that even the more subtle effects of hyponatremia have associated risks. Just as memory troubles are common, so is impaired balance. The ability of the brain to maintain normal posture, particularly in an environment where there may be some hazards, such as uneven surfaces or slippery surfaces, diminishes in hyponatremic patients. Older individuals very often have a decrease in their bone mass, that is, or thinning of the bones or osteoporosis, and in that setting, uh, a fall can lead to a significant fracture. A, um, a fracture uh, in general in an older individual often carries a much higher risk of uh, adverse uh, consequences uh, than in younger individuals. 76-year-old retired Florida resident Tina Kay enjoys reading her newspaper every morning and planning her day. Seven years ago, Tina started experiencing difficulties with her balance, but never really thought too much about them. Like Marilyn, she thought it was due to her advancing age. Balance has been a problem ever since seven years ago. Uh, in yoga class, many of the balance postures that I used to do very effortlessly on free standing on the floor, I had to stand against a wall to do. So I know that my balance has been off for a few years. It might be because of the very process that allows the brain to adapt to the hyponatremia. The brain adapts to hyponatremia by getting rid of solute particles. Those are important because they also serve as neurotransmitters in the brain. If you have a deficiency of that neurotransmitter, then your reaction time might be slowed. One day, Tina started feeling a little under the weather, so she decided to pay a visit to her doctor. I had a sinus infection and I went to my local doctor who gave me this and that medicine and after about six or eight weeks, nothing was happening. What happened is that one day I suddenly developed double vision. I literally couldn't wa walk. And the next morning my right eye 
had almost, it, it just almost fell out of my head. Doctors discovered that Tina had a rare form of cancer in her sinus cavity. They immediately put her through several courses of chemotherapy and radiation therapy and were successful. Tina has been cancer-free for seven years until one early morning in October. I got up about 5.30 in the morning or so to go to the bathroom. I got off the toilet, I just stood up, I knew I felt terrible, and I just felt, well, I've got to get to bed. And the next thing I know, I said, boy, my bed is so cold and hard. And I found myself about six feet away, flat on the tile floor of the dressing area in the bathroom. I have no idea how long I was out, but once I woke up, I literally crawled back into my bed. Her son, Gary, who was staying in the other room, didn't hear what was occurring in the bathroom. After a few hours, Tina didn't feel better and decided to wake her son. Barely able to walk, she held onto the walls until she got to the other room. And I said, Gary, I don't feel well. You've got to get me to the doctor. When I met one of the doctors there, and his first question to me was, do you drink a lot of water? And I said, sure, in Florida, everybody drinks a lot of water. He said, well, that's your problem. Tina's doctor told her all the water she had been drinking was diluting the nutrients in her system and causing her trouble. After several days in the hospital and countless tests, doctors confirmed that Tina had hyponatremia. Doctors also told her that her cancer had returned. Dr. Robert J. Green is a medical oncologist with the Palm Beach Cancer Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida. Tina had had a type of cancer known as an anesthesioneuroblastoma that had been diagnosed and treated many years before she developed hyponatremia. When we were looking into why her sodium was low, we did a CAT scan and that's what showed that there had been a recurrence of the cancer. As long as the cancer has responded to treatment, mm -hmm. we think that the hyponatremia is going to stay at bay. Dr. Green says that hyponatremia is not all that uncommon or unusual in cancer patients. Sometimes the cancer cells themselves make excess amounts of hormone vasopressin, thereby sending a wrong signal to the kidney to retain water even when the body really doesn't need more water. From an oncologist's perspective, hyponatremia is actually something that we see relatively frequently. And this is most of the time due to the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, SIADH. The tumors themselves can express ADH, and this can cause hyponatremia. True, but that's good. All of a sudden, Tina had two conditions to deal with, hyponatremia and a recurrence of cancer. And as often happens, the two are related. Coming up, we'll talk about the treatments for hyponatremia and then check back in with both Tina and Marilyn. 60% of the human body consists of water. In order for the body to function correctly and avoid dehydration, we must consume one to three liters of water per day, depending on an individual's level of activity and temperature. Drinking too much water can lead to hyponatremia. But even drinking normal amounts of water can lead to hyponatremia if levels of the hormone vasopressin are elevated. To watch this program again or see other Healthy Body, Healthy Mind episodes, please visit our website at hbhm.tv. Since the uh, uh, association between grand mal seizures and uh, acute hyponatremia, as you point out, is well known, uh, and since we have her MRI on uh, her admission to Fairfax uh, Hospital here, uh, what do you think this is going to show when we look at it? If physicians can identify the cause of hyponatremia and initiate treatment, in most cases, patients can go on living full, productive lives with no long-term effect. If the hyponatremia goes untreated, the risk of permanent damage to the brain and even death increase. Hyponatremia treatment is complex. It is, in my estimation, one of the uh, least well understood uh, aspects of, of body fluid therapy uh, in humans. You've had a problem with uh, seizure disorders for... Treatment for the condition may vary due to the severity and the underlying cause, what's triggering the hyponatremia. Marilyn Getty, the 60-year-old with chronic hyponatremia, has a condition that tells her kidneys to retain too much water. 
The only way we could treat her in the past was by a fluid.